In 2015, people would have killed to know who exactly Supreme Leader Snoke was, his true identity and role in the dark plan of the Sith and the dark side cults that had arisen following the collapse of the Empire and Return of the Jedi. Who is Supreme Leader Snoke was perhaps the second biggest question proposed in the entirety of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, behind why has Luke Skywalker exiled himself and why does he not appear until the end of The Force Awakens? Snoke theories became some of the most prominent aspects of the Star Wars fandom right after The Force Awakens was released, as next to nothing was revealed about the character in his debut film. All we knew is that he had apparently seduced Ben Solo to the dark side of the Force and was a being of incredible power. Now though, six years later, we're finally getting the full picture and full idea of who exactly Supreme Leader Snoke is, as we've only gotten little breadcrumbs along the way. And frankly, one of the most difficult things for me to accept as a Star Wars fan, and as someone who produces Star Wars content on the regular, is that people don't really care who Snoke is anymore. With that out of the way, let's finish what we started all those years ago and break down what the new novel says about Supreme Leader Snoke. And after a full novelization for The Rise of Skywalker, three films, we still have a better idea of who Snoke is as this new canon novel basically comes right out and says exactly what Snoke's creation was and the intended purpose for Snoke. A true puppet for Emperor Palpatine all along, something that the filmmakers behind The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens probably didn't even intend. Let's go ahead and get into it, my friends. The following canon explanation comes from the canon novel Star Wars The Secrets of the Sith, which is a brand new book that highlights a lot of, well, the secrets of the Sith focusing on the design of the Rule of Two and its intended purpose, revealing that the Rule of Two was actually meant to recreate a Force Dyad, a dyad that we see between Rey and Kylo Ren in The Rise of Skywalker, with it being revealed that this is in fact the Sith's interpretation of the Rule of Two, and that Palpatine attempted to create a Force Dyad with Darth Vader, just as Darth Plagueis had with Palpatine himself. But let's move on to Snoke. It is confirmed in the Secrets of the Sith novel that Snoke is a design of strand casting and countless modified clone bodies. It is revealed in the novel that Snoke's original intended purpose was for him to be a vessel for Palpatine to inhabit. However, this was only the intended purpose and this was largely abandoned as soon as Snoke was born or rather created. There was actually a single successful Palpatine clone which Palpatine referred to as his son which we learned in The Rise of Skywalker. However, this son was useless to Palpatine as he held no connection to the Force at all, which is why he was sent out through the Star Wars galaxy to eventually have a child we know, of course, being Rey. But back to the character of Snoke, though. Again, it's revealed that Snoke's original intended purpose was for him to be a clone of Palpatine, but that the idea behind this was largely abandoned very early on in Snoke's creation, as the Sith worshippers and acolytes discovered that the incredible dark side power that Palpatine had within this one clone body that he had been inhabiting would simply be too much for the body that they were creating this body that would eventually become Supreme Leader Snoke. However, unlike many of the other clone bodies, Snoke was actually able to hold a strong affinity with the Force, not just one that was marginal, but an actual strong connection to the dark side, something that was exceptionally rare for the Sith Acolytes in their creations. In the novel, Palpatine says this himself, My consciousness was transferred into my new body on Exegol. However, even after years of experimentation, the cloning techniques employed by my acolytes were inadequate. They could not create a vessel capable of containing my unfathomable power. It is revealed that after this, the Acolytes decided to take a different approach to creating a body of Palpatine. Using some of his original strand cast from his genetic material, they created a being that was not an exact clone. And although it was this individual's intended purpose to one day house the spirit of Palpatine himself so that the Sith Lord could be resurrected and made anew, even though this being had a potential to touch the Force, it could not hold the power of Palpatine. However, the Sith Acolytes and Palpatine himself had another purpose for this being that would become known as Snoke. These are Palpatine's quotes on this creation, known again as Snoke. As part of their genetic experiments, my followers had attempted to create another being that came known as Snoke. Although his body proved unworthy of containing my dark essence, Snoke's natural sensitivity to the Force would make him a powerful puppet nonetheless. What's interesting about this is in The Mandalorian, we even got a hint at this cloning process and exactly why Moff Gideon wanted the blood of Grogu, a powerful Force-sensitive 
it's all clear that this is leading to the cloning or attempted cloning of Emperor Palpatine. Although the larger story of the Mandalorian obviously revolves around Din Djarin and the legacy and heritage of the Darksaber, this is still an important facet of the series as this is where the Star Wars mythos and universe is headed. It's made clear that Snoke is a complete and utter puppet to Palpatine, a little bit more than a servant and a little bit less than an apprentice. He uses him to achieve his true goals, re-establishing sections of the Empire and reorganizing it into the First Order, as well as using Snoke as a figurehead to transfer Ben Solo to the dark side of the Force and seduce the young Skywalker. If I had to share my thoughts on this reveal of Snoke, it would be utterly underwhelming. In The Force Awakens and even before The Last Jedi, Snoke was built up as this massive identity in the Star Wars mythos. A being that was exceptionally damaged, and at the time, someone who we had heard had even had a run-in with Luke Skywalker, and a respect for the Jedi Master, as I do explicitly remember the filmmaker saying that Snoke and Luke had in fact encountered one another before. Now though, it's revealed that Snoke is just a puppet, he's not some ancient dark side entity, he's not something more than a Sith or a creature that was calling out to Palpatine beyond the unknown regions of space. He's an extent of Palpatine's will, a puppet, a figurehead, and nothing more. He's not Darth Plagueis the Wise. He's not even a clone of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Snoke is Snoke. He's a creation of Palpatine that originally was intended to be something for Palpatine's spirit to embody, a different approach to the outright cloning process that Palpatine's Sith acolytes were unable to perfect. In the end though, it is interesting a little little bit that he did develop some force sensitive qualities, something previously that we didn't believe was possible in the Star Wars canon that a clone can actually be force sensitive, even though Snoke is a little bit more than a clone. It is clear that Snoke does have some of Palpatine's genetics running through his veins, however, and that a part of Snoke is derived from Palpatine. This does leave potential for other dark side acolytes or potentially even the blood of Grogu to be running through Snoke's veins, but I would be surprised if they explore this any further. Anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the big reveal of who Supreme Leader Snoke really is? And and are you satisfied with the answer that we've gotten nearly six years after the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Or are you utterly disappointed? As always, my friends, thank you guys for following me on this Star Wars journey with Snoke and various aspects of the Star Wars lore. May the Force be with you, and I hope to see you in the next video.